Saray just released a very interesting full-frame anamorphic lens that's super tiny compared to the competition. So what I want to know is, does it still give us all the anamorphic characteristics we want, and if there's anything we need to know about that could be a deal breaker? Hey, what's going on everybody? Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker here, where I try to condense everything you need to know into one small video so you can get on your way. Saray is not a stranger when it comes to budget anamorphic lenses, and this newest one that they've just released is probably the most interesting one out of the entire bunch. And I want to thank Saray for lending me this lens so that I can play around with it and give you my thoughts. Now for comparison, I'm going to be using my Great Joy 35mm because they're both similar in focal length, and I just want to know, how many anamorphic characteristics can actually be in a lens this small? In terms of similarities, they're both anamorphic lenses at a T2.9 transmission rating. They both offer a consistent squeeze and they are made for full frame. Although one can say that the Great Joy is not really made for full frame as it does not cover the full sensor of my Sony A7S III. Now, if I crop the vignette away, we're essentially getting the same field of view as the Saray. The immediate difference between these two lenses is the squeeze factor. The Saray comes in at a 1.6, whereas the Great Joy comes in at a 1.8. Now, in most regular shots, you're probably actually not going to see the difference in the squeeze factors in terms of its bokeh. But once you slap on a diopter to get closer than 3 feet, that's when you can start seeing more bokeh. And in which case, this is the difference between a 1.6 and a 1.8. All classical anamorphic lenses have distortion. In this case, the Saray seems to have a pincushion type of distortion, whereas the Great Joy has a barrel distortion. Looking at the flare characteristics, Saray gives you two different options. You can either choose a blue flare or a neutral flare. I chose the neutral flare because I like the idea that the flare will take on whatever color the light source actually is. Great Joy, on the other hand, they don't specifically tell you, but they say it's a neutral coating. However, if you know about Great Joy lenses, they don't flare very easily. So if you're trying to get a flare, the Saray is probably going to be your best bet to get that classic look. Moving past the optics, we take a look at how these lenses actually handle. The Saray has a focus throw of approximately 120 degrees. In my opinion, this is probably the best sweet spot for you to actually manually pull focus with your fingers, or you can rig it up to a wireless follow focus without it feeling like it's too touchy. The Great Joy, on the other hand, has nearly a 270 degree focus throw. While this is very awesome, you're not going to be able to pull focus very quickly with just your hands if you're trying to go minimal. Chances are you're really going to have to rig it up if your shot requires a lot of focus pulling. When choosing between these two lenses to fit your camera, you're going to have to look at the camera mounts available. The Great Joy is technically the most versatile for the moment, and that is because they have a PL, an EF, as well as some other popular mirrorless camera mounts. Whereas the Saray is mirrorless only, but for only three specific mounts. There's the DJI DL mount, there's the Canon RF, and then there's the Sony E. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this is a con, but not necessarily because of how Saray is marketing this specific lens. And if you shoot within those three types of lens mounts, you're in for a treat. For a lot of budget indie filmmakers like me who do not have the most expensive types of equipment, this is going to be a lot easier for us to use, specifically when it comes to on a gimbal. With the gimbals that I have that are basically mid-budget tier, there is no prayer for me to actually have the great joy float on the gimbal. Whereas with the Saray, because it's so much lighter and smaller, I can use my budget gimbal and get a shot. If you are a professional drone operator, and I'm talking about the ones in Hollywood where you're basically using this big octocopter and you are flying a cinema camera, in which case the cinema camera is kind of already heavy on its own, especially when it's rigged up to all the batteries and stuff. And having a lens this light compared to something that's much heavier, you're going to be able to balance that gimbal much easier. The motors don't have to work as hard. And of course, your octocopter does not have to fly as hard, which basically allows you to fly much longer. And because of how they've designed this lens, another smaller type of drone like a DJI Inspire would be able to fly this as well. So indie filmmakers like me, who are not going to be able to afford an octocopter flying one of our cameras, we can definitely 
either hire out someone who has a DJI Inspire and still get some really awesome shots with these lenses that we use on our gimbals and our handheld rigs. Some of you may be wondering, what about the Lawa Nanomorphs? Well, the Lawa Nanomorphs are indeed small, but they are only for Super 35 sensors only, whereas this one will cover full frame. So in terms of versatility between different cameras, this is going to be the better bet. So at the end of the day, if you asked me which lens system would I choose, I would actually choose the Surrey. It's extremely versatile because of how small it is. I can put it on a handheld rig, I can put it on a gimbal, I can put it on a jib, and if I have someone with a DJI Inspire or any other type of copter, then they can balance this very easily because they don't have to bring too much counterweight. Not only that, with the action films I generally shoot, I usually go handheld and will pull focus with my fingers. Having that 120 degree focus throw is great for that. And when I look at the optical quality, especially when I put on a diopter, the images that come out of this lens are incredibly smooth and beautiful. Honestly, I could film an entire feature film with this lens alone and be perfectly content. Now hold on one second. In your previous video when you talked about Saray versus Greatjoy, you said you like the Greyjoy more because of the PL mount EF making it much more versatile for the future. So why am I suddenly really loving Saray? Well, it's simply because Saray has announced that they are coming out with their own EF and PL mount lenses. And the cool thing about this is, is four out of the five lenses are going to be a fast T2.0, and the last one is going to be a T2.8. That is definitely very awesome. And if we take a look at how they've designed this Saturn lens, I'm really hoping that their EF and PL mount will take some design cues from this, trying to keep it compact and hopefully not terribly heavy or long, in which case that is going to be much more versatile with pretty much everything I've talked about with this design. And hey guys, that is the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching as well as listening to my just getting out of a cold voice. <laughs> But if you want to purchase these lenses, I do have some affiliate links down below. They do help the channel, and I thank you for that. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.